Hello there. It's the 23rd of July, 2019. And uh, today, Boris Johnson uh, won the leadership uh, competition, the uh, hustings and so on over the last two weeks, against his rival, Jeremy Hunt, to win leadership of the Conservative Party. Uh, it was announced at uh, 12.29 today, and I'm going to have a little look at the, uh, the announcement chart because it's quite interesting in relation to the theme that we've been looking at about full and new moon degrees. Uh, we're first of all going to have a look at Boris's chart, though, because of the uh, full and new moon degree appear in that. But I'd also like to take a look at the type of character that um, uh, we, we will be seeing or will we be experiencing. I mentioned um, in another um, horoscope, uh, another uh, chart uh, video session, that uh, the chart of a leader of a country uh, uh, undertakes a process that uh, mundane astrology um, calls the subsumption. And that means that the horoscope of the leader of a country often represents also what's going on in the country because it's as if that energy from the top seeps down through the cabinet through through various things and uh, through various mechanisms and it's as if the will or the character of the person seeps in and so represents partially what's going on in the country it's also symbolized that that whatever however means whatever whatever mechanism is used to create a leader of a country um that 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 leader is somehow a representative of the main power in that country because that's how they got to the top. So we're going to look at Boris Johnson and I hope that uh, I wish him well in his enterprise to become um, the Prime Minister. He will go to the Queen tomorrow to ask for that permission and obviously it'll be gained and then he'll start selecting his cabinet and so on. Probably lots of things are going on behind the scenes as I speak. But I'd like to look at the type of character that uh, we have here, and I'd like to bring his horoscope up now. Um, now, I trust, let me just move that up there, like that. Well, I hope that we can all see this. Um, I'd like to draw your attention, first of all, to the new moon point, which was on the 2nd of July. The new moon was at 10.38, and I, although this is a little off, you'll notice that Boris Johnson's uh, time of birth is given as 2 p.m. Um, in my experience, not many people are born on the hour, but it's, it, it's often um, uh, shifted to the nearest point, you know, quarter to ten to, and so on. So I, I have a suspicion that this uh, th this degree here, this uh, twelve fifty two, maybe even a little less. So he's born just a little less time uh, than two o'clock. I suspect if we were rectifying this chart, we might think about that. But it doesn't really matter for our purposes because we see the 11 degree ascendant. Either that's earlier or the ascendant and seventh house is accented by the new moon degree at, uh, at uh, 1038 uh, Cancer. So yet again, we can see the presence of himself and other. In many ways, uh, this is the nation now or was his rival. But it brings the angles of the horoscope into being. Angles of a horoscope usually represent manifestation of the personality in some way, what is beneath the personality, how it represents in, in the public eye. And uh, the, the seventh and first axis represent a relational element between self and other. So the full moon, interestingly enough, is in Boris Johnson's 10th and 4th house. And uh, that was just a few days ago. It's at the 24th degree of Capricorn. And it doesn't uh, connect it to anything in the chart. But in the announcement chart, we see today Venus is at 24 Cancer. So as I was pointing out with Trump and Assange, uh, Assange has his Mercury at 24. Um, as as a, a transiting planet hits that new moon degree, we get something manifesting. So you can see. It's in the house of the uh, 10th and 4th. The 10th, often by traditional astrology, is you know, what used to be called our house of honour. 
but it's also the house of our destiny to a certain extent destiny in terms of destination where we are going in life the cusp of the tenth house is often represented how the public see us it's our public office our status our, our, our sense of what our name is in the world and you can see here that the moon rules the tenth it's in the first this is often a popular person although the moon in scorpio which we'll come to is rather his his there are secret things or secret thoughts this person is deeper than we suspect from the uh, bumbling Boris epithets that have been given to him and that he's done his best to portray over the years. He has a kind of Cancerian face. There is a, uh, a Libran element here, conjunction the sun, a very popularist person, uh, given to talking, given to famous epithets and puns. Um, you notice that this is in the ninth house. Uh, the sun is in the ninth house, and this is given sometimes to public office, but also quite broad learning. Um, I, I think it appears in Boris Johnson's chart as that he was once the editor of The Spectator, which is a well-known magazine. So he's in the talking business. He talks things up. They may be even more twittering business. Um, and he's known to play both sides, say one thing, mean another. It doesn't mean to say it's lying as such. It means that um, the Gemini face sometimes doesn't know. It's always in between. It's discussing things. It's, well, it could be this and it could be that. You can often hear in, um, in Gemini statements, especially with Mercury in Gemini here, heavily accented, is that they, they say things to please the moment. Um, but there, w what happens is that th there is an, an, an uncertainty or an unknownness and I was thinking about this before I did the video, and it's interesting that Donald Trump is a Gemini, although he's conjunction uh, Uranus. Michael Moore called him the Molotov cocktail of the American politics, you know, uh, uh, very, very unpredictable, very uh, chaotic sometimes, says one thing, blurts things out. But it, his unpredictability is in many ways what, what he offers. There is a uniqueness and a difference. Here we have a very smooth kind of outer appearance, but uh, uh, with what he says uh, uh, to suit it, the ninth house of publishing and broadcasting and uh, world knowledge in particular. I think this uh, person always wanted to be uh, somehow famous or being seen. Uh, the moon in the first house often represents popularity and the Libra and Ascendant is, is, a, is a smoothie, if you like. Now, but we see this Mars in Gemini. Uh, sometimes, if you're sophisticated, like um, uh, Tony Blair was, Mars on the Ascendant, um, he was a bit of a warmonger, but could uh, in many ways get his will done through the duplicity of his words, through saying one thing, meaning another, night when I caught, he was a master of that. Um, he could say things, but uh, in the when you're a clever lawyer like he was, it was a, it's about... Um, saying things but not actually uh, delineating them exactly so that when you look back in history you didn't say this you didn't say that it's all legal speak I don't think Boris Johnson is that sophisticated so we get this bumbling out this uh, conflictual words of this Mars you can see it is in, is in, in his uh, behavior expressions he often goes like this or like that and he bumps things out and things enter him into his head and he's before he's before he thinks it's said it's it's known and you can see this Mars square to Uranus here we have a kind of erratic temper quick to quick to arouse rather like the Donald Trump as soon as something is there emotionally upset him uh, particularly in his mind he'll bump forth with something at least what you get is a, a kind of expression of what's underneath so this is the Boris Johnson that we see here. We see the full moon activated in the house of Korea. And uh, there were some things in the paper about what's going on at home and his partnerships and uh, all that. That came into prominence as the new moon degree hit off the seventh and the first house, self-promotion and the partner. I'm not interested in that kind of gossip. 
especially when a neighbour called the police. Uh, it's all to do with um, being very partisan and trying to uh, put a kind of dampener on his, um, his, his way into office. Now, whenever you get strong Gemini in a chart, and here we have four planets and another two planets in mutables and another one here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in what is called mutable signs. Mutable signs are representative of the end of seasons. They're neither one thing or any other. They they blend. They move over. One doesn't quite know when the season is finished and when the other one has begun. And so the the art of mutable science is being not necessarily duplicitous, but um, it can vary with the wind. Uh, Donald Trump is a Gemini, as I said, and interestingly enough, so is Jeremy Corbyn a Gemini. Um, I think the last Gemini president in the United States was Kennedy, John Kennedy, and uh, only he could have kind of talked his way through or somehow not given in, especially in the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1963. So it's quite rare that Geminis get in because there's um, a bit of this and a bit of that. There's an uncertainty of the ideas. Uh, in general terms, Geminis are conduits. Uh, they, 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 they push forward, they, they can speak well, or they need a big vocabulary. Boris Johnson does. He was, as I say, editor of The Spectator, which means view or somebody that sees. And we can see this sun uh, in physiological astrology represents the eye, the sight, the seeing, the light of consciousness. It's in Gemini. And so uh, this man of words and letters and history um, is it was in his element there. But when you see this multiplicity of mutable signs, you get a, an ability to waver or to say one thing and do another. And the contradiction doesn't seem to upset Gemini. Um, one day they mean it, the next day they might not. It's a, it's a kind of curious thing to come across. In the words you get sometimes, maybe, probably, perhaps, we'll see, uh, uh, maybe some other time, if possible. All these kind of on-the-fence words, it could swing one way, it could swing another. It was said that Boris Johnson's greatest skill in politics was avoiding the question and just simply saying what he wanted. Uh, uh, Blair has that too with his Gemini ascendant. But what tends to happen is, especially with Gemini, is that whatever splits there are in the chart tend to be more split. In other words, the personality as a whole uh, portrays one side and then another. So we see this abalient, pleasing wordsmith who sometimes uh, you know, quotes Latin, does all kinds of things, occasionally bumps into conflict. His own emotions get him. It, it stirs him, I think. And then this Mars Uranus hits out or lashes out or bumps around, something like that. Sometimes accident prone. But I've seen this Mars in Gemini very mentally led, very powerful mind. And... Uh, uh, w w w won't be easily moved from his position because he, he can Gemini apparently moves positions but uh, we can start to see this moon in Scorpio which is the other side of him so what you might see on the surface this person is a uh, is uh, someone who has um, created a persona um, uh, an ebullient, uh, joyous, speak things up, speaking things up, uh, uh, talking to anybody, sometimes a, a bit of a pretense, but you have to do that in politics. And so we see a lot of Gemini Libra. But the other side, if you see this Mercury square Pluto and the moon in Scorpio. So the moon is our representative of what we're in touch with at an instinctual level. It's our capacity to form empathy and bonds with other people. It is the organ, the astrological organ of empathy. And here we see it in Scorpio. There's a deeper, darker side, perhaps more sexual side. And in his private life, there have been often girlfriends and um, uh, some, so, some things going on behind the scenes. Um, as I say, I'm not that much interested in salacious material for the sake of it. But what we see here 
is that the moon in Scorpio represents a deeper instinct that, that we would see with the Gemini. So, and the Mercury is square to Pluto, and Pluto is the god of the underworld. And so therefore it's on the instinctual survival capabilities of the nation. This man has a tap into that and he has a, uh, he's born in 1964 with this conjunction, which was at a time where there was great rebellion. Um, there was a massive change and transformation taking place in the 60s and it was breaking down the social order, the usual routines that you might link with Virgo. At least this is on a political level. So people were brought alive with LSD and freedom and they, they turned on the, the natural order, the, the usual way that things were done. And it precipitated a crisis. So when Mercury is square to Pluto, the person has a deeper instinct for things than is apparent on the surface. They're calling for, from deeper strata, a very astute eye on political power. Pluto in the 11th house often represents taking that power, political power, into the collective. Uh, uh, often uh, politicians of note have a strong um, um, uh, Pluto in their horoscope, and it's often represented because they have to break down things, break down things in society and, 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 and weather those storms of survival. So uh, they used to this, this where they call it the greasy pole, because when you climb up, you inevitably make enemies. But he's an astute politician. I think he's carefully cultivated this um, bumbling hair, all of that kind of thing. There was a thing in the paper the other day about whether he dyes his hair blonde or whether it's natural. I don't care really, but you could start to see this sun, Venus comes through, a calculated persona, um, likeable, laughable, um, creating uh, likes games, um, uh, perhaps word games in his own mind and also you know laughs joviality can talk to anybody but underneath we have this a brooding emotional need to be significant and important boom trying to saturn um reigns in their feelings and puts it to use in a um in 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 a political or organizational strategy yes it's it, it's a feeling i think he has a feeling for the pulse underneath so there is something deeper uh, it, 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 to, to boris johnson other than this surface that we see here so Neptune at the moment is interesting in the office on this Chiron and opposed to this. We may talk about that another time, but there's some deep stuff going on here, perhaps from childhood. I don't know what it is, but um, it, it, when, when Neptune is on the Chiron, Chiron often refers to the suffering of the nation um, and suffering generally, whether it's his own or other people. So he's taken on the mantle of a, of a difficult split in society at the moment. And uh, of course, he's talking bold, he's talking strong uh, language. Michel Barney has already said he looks forward to uh, um, uh, putting forward the agreement again and so on. So there's intransigence from across the, uh, uh, across the channel, but we shall see whether Boris could do anything. Um, this Jupiter opposed Neptune, this is the wish fulfilling aspect, a person that can fantasize and put things into action. Um, and Jupiter in Taurus, a very rich person he is, but I like this. And you can see that it, it, it plays into this Pluto. There's a very powerful set of energies. Jupiter is that which wants to make things large, put things, make things significant, uh, be up there, be famous. Uh, and although it's in the eighth house, I, I, I do feel it's strongly connected here, yeah, very much to this Neptune in the second, which is um, perhaps taking on the mantle of a savior. In my other videos, we talked about Neptune as becoming sometimes a guru figure, or so he's come in at a certain time in life where he's fulfilled his ultimate fantasies. And maybe he is the saviour figure. We uh, will see. But don't let that surface fool you. Anybody with the moon in Scorpio uh, is determined and sometimes obsessional in their determination. 
sometimes moon in scorpio can see uh, see through the dark or be a little bit paranoid um uh, uh, but uh, trying to uh, saturn here even though it's in water signs has a strong and thorough determination a um a kind of uh, self discipline uh, lastly i'd like to point out the grand trine although it's over the sign we've got uh, uh, air signs here but it is trying to the moon moon is trying to saturn and saturn is trying to this venus sun conjunction this could put a barrier around the person this is a single-minded person who who wishes to um keep himself insular a bit you could call it a, a defensive circuit in the in the personality which keeps things out but it is a very powerful drive only i i believe those people that know him intimately uh, uh may see uh, may see the real boris johnson underneath uh but we will see i think he's got his work cut out and in that i wish him well okay well i could hope hope that we all see there that the full moon and new moon uh, positions were accenting certain places in the chart and boris leader becomes leader uh conservative party tomorrow will be sworn in uh, to become the uh, prime minister of this country i wish him well and uh, let's see what else can happen with the next chart that i'm going to do following video to do with the chart of the announcement this morning that boris johnson had won that's interesting too because we see venus in the 10th house conjunct this full moon degree indicating a person successful coming into uh, office on the popular vote of the conservative party okay see you next video